Welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today, we are going to discuss the Hindu newspaper dated 23rd March 2018. Let's begin. On page number 1, the news reads, Congress plans privilege motion against Sushma. So in this news, without going into the politics of this particular news, let us understand about privilege motion with respect to our UPSC examination. Now, privilege motion is a notice given by member of either House of Parliament or a state legislative assembly against anyone who are accused of breach of privilege. Now in this respect, let us understand about parliamentary privilege. Parliamentary privileges refers to rights and immunities enjoyed by members of parliament as well as members of state legislative assemblies. Members of parliament and state legislatures are given more liberty and freedom of speech during the proceedings of the house as compared to a normal citizens. Such special privileges help them in discharging their duty independently and effectively and without any fear from outside interference. In this respect, the Constitution of India under Article 105 and 194 provides for power, privileges and immunities of Parliament and State Legislature and their corresponding members. In this respect, it is important to note that parliamentary privileges are yet not codified. It means Article 105 gives Parliament the power to frame a law on parliamentary privileges but the Parliament so far has not framed a law on the specifics of parliamentary privileges, powers as well as the immunities provided to the members of Parliament as well as state legislative assemblies. Thus, parliamentary privileges is yet not codified. It is important to remember this point as a prelims question can be asked on parliamentary privileges. And this uncodification of parliamentary privileges has at times led to the misuse of certain privileges according to members of parliament and state legislative assemblies. And in absence of any codified parliamentary privileges law, the parliamentary privileges continues to be governed by British parliamentary conventions. In this respect, let us also understand about breach of privilege. A breach of privilege is a violation of any of the privileges of MPs or parliament. Any unwanted action by either of these three that is members of parliament, members of legislative assemblies or member of legislative council. And this may also include publishing of news items, editorials or statements made in newspaper, magazine or TV interviews. Thus in this news we saw about privilege motion, parliamentary privileges especially given to the members of parliament, members of state legislative assembly as well as member of legislative council and also that constitution of India under article 105 and 194 provides for power, privileges as well as immunities to these members so that they can perform their functions in the parliament as well as state legislative assembly without any interference and also that these privileges have yet not been codified by the parliament or no law has been passed by the parliament for codification of these parliamentary privileges and as of now these parliamentary privileges continues to be governed by British conventions and breach of privilege include violation of any of the privileges conferred to these members. Thus this topic becomes very important from your prelims point of view and this topic gets covered under the polity section of UPSC. Statements based question can be asked on privilege, breach of privilege or privilege motion or a combination of these three. Suppose these three statements have been given in your prelims question. The statement one reads, Parliament has laid down a law on parliamentary privileges. After going through this video, we know that this statement is incorrect. Next statement, Constitution does not mention about parliamentary privileges. We know that under Article 105 and Article 194, parliamentary privileges do get some mention in the Indian Constitution. Hence again, this statement is incorrect. Statement 3, parliamentary privileges are the same as enjoyed in Britain. Now we know that this statement is correct. So after going through this video analysis, you would be able to attempt questions of parliamentary privileges in your prelims examination. With this, let's move on to the next news. The next news appears on page number 1 as well as on page number 7. Let's see these two news together. In this news, the CEO of UIDAI, that is Unique Identification Authority of India, in an ongoing case of Aadhaar in the Supreme Court of India, through a PowerPoint presentation, defended the issue of data breach and data theft 
from the Aadhaar database. As you know, all these data is collected by UIDAI, that is both the biometric as well as demographic information, are personal data of citizens, and if leaked, can be misused by various organizations for different unauthorized purposes, including profiling of people. Thus, to defend this idea of data breach, the CEO of UIDAI has assured the Supreme Court. that the data given to the aadhaar database is quite secured and you can read here it says that 12 digit aadhaar number is random and no state code or intelligence is employed to help profile holder through aadhaar aadhaar number is blocked on the death of the holder thus in the ongoing case the ceo of uidai defended the safety features of aadhaar database and said that aadhaar provides a robust lifetime nationally online verifiable identity and it is in this respect uidai has come up with additional feature of security such as face authentication and virtual id number or also known as vid so in this respect let us understand about both these face authentication and virtual id you can see on page number 7 that the face id from july 1 for aadhaar authentication Hence, the UIDAI has approved this face authentication from 1st of July 2018. So, let us understand about the features provided in Face ID and how such an authentication will help the citizens. Now, this issue of face authentication was covered in the February issue of Focus magazine. So, let us understand through this what is face authentication. The UIDAI has said that it will enable face authentication as an additional feature for authentication of aadhar from 1st july 2018 so as per the aadhar act uidai is responsible for aadhar enrollment and authentication hence this becomes an important piece of information with respect to your prelims examination including operation and management of all stages of aadhar now what is authentication authentication is the process by which aadhar number along with biometric or demographic information of an aadhar number holder is submitted to the CIDR that is central identities data repositories for verification it provides a digital online identity platform to verify the identity of aadhar holders thus this is an additional feature for verification of the identity it also ensures the security of identity information and authentication records presently UIDAI provides two modes of biometric authentication first fingerprint authentication and second iris authentication now apart from the two uidai will further add face authentication as an additional mode of aadhaar authentication with effect from 1st july 2018 so through this we understand about the concept of authentication that uidai is empowered for authentication under the aadhaar act as well as apart from the two modes uidai has also introduced face authentication as an extra mode for the verification of aadhar holders so in this respect let us understand about face authentication now what is this face authentication based on so basically this facial authentication is based on the spatial geometry te technology which differentiates between different features of a human face now this facial recognition works by calculating the distance between the eyes width of the nose depth of the eye sockets the shape of the cheek bones length of the jaw line etc as we know that some of the modern smartphones have also started this feature of face recognition now this is another important aspect to be remembered from prelims point of view that face authentication shall be allowed only in fusion mode that is along with one or more authentication factor face authentication will not be done alone it will be done in the fusion mode with either fingerprint or along with iris scan and in this respect uidai has further clarified that face authentication shall be done only where it will be needed hence it will not be done everywhere now why this face authentication is required this face recognition will help those who face difficulty during authentication or in getting government benefit because of either iris injury worn out fingerprints or due to old age or due to manual labor or even skin disease now this face authentication will also help people suffering with leprosy and it will also help senior citizen who have poor biometrics or who face difficulty in registration of their biometric details 
and this additional feature of face authentication will also help people who suffer with physical disabilities. Thus we see this additional feature of face authentication will actually help those people who face difficulty while registering their biometric details with the Aadhaar authorities. Now let us also understand about the new concept of virtual identification number. VID shall be a temporary revocable 16 digit random number. So important thing to remember about VID is that it is a 16 digit temporary number mapped with the original Aadhaar number to be used by Aadhaar holders for authentication purpose. There will be only one active and valid VID for an Aadhaar number at any given time. Hence, at a given time, only one VID number shall be available. VID will also be revocable and can be easily replaced by generating a, a new VID by the Aadhaar holder. Now how this VID will be helpful? Through the VID, it will not be possible to derive the original Aadhaar number and hence its duplication becomes nearly impossible and also it becomes nearly impossible to trace the original Aadhaar number. Hence, it also provides a security to the original Aadhaar number. This two-layered security system of Aadhaar will help in consolidating data and prevent unnecessary exposure of original Aadhaar details to various user agencies. The concept of VID will effectively shield original Aadhaar number of any resident. So this VID will effectively shield the original Aadhaar data and will ultimately help in prevention of any misuse or leak of such data. Thus in this news, we saw about face authentication as well as virtual identity number and how these two provides as an extra measure for safety and security. Now any question with respect to face authentication or virtual ID can be solved in your prelims examination if asked. Now suppose these three statements have been given in the exam. Statement first reads, face authentication has to be used without the use of fingerprint or iris scan. Now the statement is incorrect because we know that face authentication shall be used only in fusion mode that is along with fingerprint or iris scan. Hence this statement is incorrect. Next virtual ID is a 12 digit permanent number. No, we know that virtual ID is a 16 digit temporary number and it is revocable that is can be revoked. Hence this statement is also incorrect. Next face authentication is a part of demographic information. No, face authentication is a part of biometric information. As we have studied here that UIDI provides for two modes of biometric authentication namely fingerprint and iris scan. And now besides the above two, UIDI will also add face authentication as an additional mode of Aadhaar authentication. Hence it will be a part of biometric information, not demographic information. Hence all these three hence all these three statements provided are incorrect. I hope with this news on virtual ID as well as on face authentication, you will be able to solve any prelims question if asked. This topic becomes part of your polity syllabus. With this, let's move on to the next news. Now the next news appears on page number 14. Here the news reads 10 missions on Anvil to boost exports. Cabinet not expected soon for the new market development program said by the Commerce Minister of India. In this news, the Union Cabinet is expected to approve 10 missions aimed at development of exports. It involves creation of a market development mission of Indian products globally. This will help in identification of global markets for our Indian products. And in this respect, the government is focusing on a multi-pronged strategy to generate exports worth $1 trillion of both goods and services. The government also aims to develop a strategy for market penetration, market research, new products and new markets to boost export. The government also wants to focus on labor intensive exports and diversification of export basket. Now this diversification of export basket means to bring in more products for export both in the goods category as well as in the services category. The center has also identified 12 services as champion services including medical tourism and aviation. The government also wishes to identify export clusters around coastal areas to, for the promotion of exports. And the government also wishes to promote agricultural exports. This all these steps to be taken by the government will effectively increase, will effectively boost exports from India. 
this topic becomes important from your economic section for the UPSC. A prelims question can be asked with respect to boosting of exports and some of the statements as discussed here can be provided. A mains question can be asked on discuss various steps which can be taken by the government to boost exports. Thus all the points discussed here can be included in your answer. This topic becomes important from your economy section. With this let's move on to the next news. Now we come to page number 8. Here in this news, here the news reads curbing misuse. Protecting innocent person is fine as long as the SCST act is not defanged. Now this news pertains to the recent Supreme Court judgment which talked about the misuse of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act 1989. And in this the Supreme Court has said that before filing an FIR under this particular act the police must ensure the authenticity of the claim. This act also becomes important because in one of its section it denies granting of anticipatory bail. Now this topic was covered extensively by Ankur sir on 21st March 2018. So to further understand this particular topic you can refer to Ankur sir's video of 21st March 2018. Hence we move on to the next news. Now we move to next news. The next news appears on page number 8 as well as on page number 9. This news for our UPSC point of view pertains to data provided on various social media apps, issue of data security or data breach, issues pertaining to right to privacy including right to free consent and the issue of data mining. Related questions were asked in the year 2008 as well as in 2009. The questions were, are traditional determinants of voting behavior in India changing? Examine in the context of last general elections. Now this question becomes relevant even in today's context. Next question is, what should be the role of media to project mass reality in place of illusion of reality? In both these news, the issues which involved are change of voting behavior or pattern through collection of personalized data as such data from social media apps provides a more personal psychological profile of an individual including ideological preferences which together help in targeting communication and forecast electoral or voting behavior of people or, or group of people. These data are mostly collected through leaks or breach in the security system. At times these data are also collected without consent or with our consent. Hence the issue of right to privacy of personal data becomes one of the major concerns. Thus in these changing times the law needs to keep pace with changing time and technology and it is in this respect that the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has constituted a committee under the chairmanship of Justice B. N. Sri Krishna to study various issues pertaining to data security, data sovereignty, data retention, by specific government authorities, responsibility of government, companies and individuals with respect to data safety, issue of handling of data by a third party and also to frame a data security law in India. Thus this topic of data security as well as use of data in changing voting behavior or pattern becomes an important issue with respect to UPSC. As you have seen similar questions have been asked in the past. So in this respect it also becomes the duty of the election commission to provide a more stronger regulatory environment for the conduct of free and fair elections. So the issue of misuse of data which may result in development of fake news can also affect or change voting behavior or pattern. And this is a disturbing trend for the growth and nurture of a healthy democracy as it directly affects a transparent, free and fair election process in India. Hence this news regarding data security, data leak and misuse of data in election process becomes an important news with respect to UPSC examination. With this let's move on to the next news. Now the next news appears on page number 7. Here the news reads indigenous technology tested of Brahmo's missile. Seeker a critical technology used to come from Russia. Now this topic comes under GS paper 3 and specifically under achievements of Indians in science and technology and indigenization of technology and developing new technology. So let us understand this news about indigenous technologies with respect to the Brahmos missile. So in this news Brahmos missile test fired successfully with indigenous seeker technology. Now this seeker technology determines the accuracy of a missile and improves its precision. And the advantage of having a seeker technology is that 
India would not be dependent on Russia to import this technology for BrahMos missile. And this technology can be tailored to improve accuracy of India's other missile system. In this respect, let us understand about BrahMos missile. Now, BrahMos is the fastest cruise missile of its class in the world, and it has a range of roughly around 450 kilometers. BrahMos has been jointly manufactured with Russia, and it has a multiple launch capability. It means that it can be launched from land, air, sea, and even subsea, that is through submarines. So in this respect, let us also understand about the concept of cruise missile. A cruise missile is self-propelled guided missile with a low altitude flight path. And the cruise missile is different from a ballistic missile. Now this point becomes important to know from UPSC point of view, where a ballistic missile has a high arching trajectory and it generally goes to the outer space and again come back to strike the surface. Thus, it is initially powered and guided but then follows a fire and forget sequence. Whereas a cruise missile is always self-propelled and it can be guided at all times. Ballistic missiles cover a larger distance as compared to cruise missiles. Thus, this topic becomes important from your prelims point of view. As questions can be asked with respect to seeker technology, how the seeker technologies in a Brahmo missile works, that is it determines accuracy of a missile and improves precision. And what is the difference between a cruise missile and a ballistic missile? With this, let's move on to the next news. Now another important news appearing on page number 18, that is on the last page, talks about glacier melting passes point of no return. In this news, let us understand about the concept of albedo. Albedo refers to the concept of fraction of light reflected by a body or surface or in other words the amount of heat reflected without any absorption and in this respect the albedo of ice is much greater as compared to albedo of water. In other words the property of ice to reflect back sunlight is much more as compared to that property of water. Hence water absorbs more light whereas ice reflects more light. Thus if most of the ice is converted into water then the albedo of earth will decrease. It means the radiation reflecting capacity of the surface will reduce. So if all the ice are converted into water it will further lead to absorption of heat by the earth system leading to a warmer climate. Hence a significant amount of ice on the planet is necessary. In this respect it is also important to understand that the greenhouse gas by trapping more infrared radiation can lower the albedo of the earth or in other words it can increase the capacity of the earth to absorb heat which is not a good news for global warming. Thus the concept of albedo becomes important from your prelims point of view in the environment section. Hence this news must be read considering the concept of albedo. With this let's move on to the next news. Now the next news appears on the same page 18, it reads Sophie the robotic fish will explore coral reefs. Now this news becomes important specifically with reference to your prelims examination as a similar question on coral reefs has already been asked in the year 2014. Now these coral polyps or organism, so basically these corals are animals, can live on their own but are primarily associated with the spectacularly diverse limestone communities or reefs they construct. Hence, these corals are mostly found on tropical waters and require adequate amount of salinity for their survival. And this is also one of the reason why they are mostly not found on the mouth of a river as mouth of a river brings silt and also because of the fact that river brings fresh water. So it becomes very difficult for them to survive in such a condition as silt also leads to their suffocation. Polyps or corals are mostly found around the shallow part of the ocean as they require sunlight and are mostly found around the depth of 200 meter in the ocean. Coral reefs are also referred as tropical rainforest of sea due to their richness and diversity. Corals are one of the most productive ecosystem on earth and provides important services to mankind such as fisheries, coastal protection, recreation, tourism etc. 
Hence, this topic on coral reefs becomes important and also because a question was asked in the year 2014. In this, which of the following have coral reefs? Andaban and Nicobar Islands? Yes. Gulf of Kutch? Yes. Gulf of Mannar? Yes. Sundarbans? No. And the correct answer would be A. Thus, this news on Sophie the robotic fish which will explore coral reefs becomes important from your UPSC prelims point of view. With this, we come to an end to today's newspaper. Let's move on to the question for the day. 